Hello guys, these lessons are part of my software called the Flash Brain Anatomy. You can check it out and purchase it. I put my website down there in the description, flashbrainanatomy.com. In this lesson I will talk about the areas of the cortex. Of course there are 52 areas according to the Broadman's map of the brain cortex. However, I don't think your teacher or professor will ask you to know all that. And we will just go through some areas of the brain that have a great functional significance and we will not discuss all 52 areas of the Broadman's map of the cortex. Okay, we have the primary sensible cortex here on the post central gyrus. Okay, and this cortex here is important for receiving the signal from receptors all over the body. On the medial side of the brain, you can still notice the, the that part of the cortex here. Okay. Then we have the primary motor cortex, and it's in the precentral gyrus here. And you can notice the same functional area here on the other side of the brain. The reason why this is called the post central and this is the pre central is because of the central sulcus here. This is the central sulcus, okay? And the gyrus here is called the post central and the gyrus here is called the pre central gyrus. Then right here we have the secondary motor cortex. This cortex is important for writing, playing piano, and, and such more complicated movements that are associated with learning through the time and uh, while growing up. And one truly important part of that cortex is here on this ascending part of the lateral sulcus here. And this part is important for speech movements. If, if there is a stroke or if this part of the brain is damaged, the patient will be available to understand what is being told to him, but he won't be able to pronounce the words, to articulate words, to, to make sentences, and because he won't be able to coordinate his mouth movement and, and thumb movement. These lessons are part of my software called the Flash Brain Anatomy. You can check it out and purchase it. I put my website down there in the description, flashbrainanatomy.com. Okay, and here we have the calcarean fissure and the cortex around it is the primary visual cortex. It is the cortex around the calcarean fissure and it is important for receiving the signal from your eyes. However, the area that is important for perception and understanding what is seen and remembering what was seen before, it, it is not the primary uh, visual cortex. It is a bit more further from the calcarine fissure and it is marked as an area 18 by Broadman. Now if your primary cortex works fine, you will be able to receive the signal from your eyes through the optic tract and nerve. But if your secondary visual cortex doesn't work, you won't be able to understand what you see. You won't be able to understand what, what is in front of you until you touch it. And it's really interesting how patients with such problems are not able to recognize, for example, a mobile phone, for example, if they're looking at it. And however, if they take the phone, immediately they know what it is. Okay, so this part of the cortex is important for receiving the auditory signal. It is not important for perception of the signal, but just receiving the signal itself. Okay, and this gyrus here is called the supramarginal gyrus. And this area is important for understanding the speech. So here you receive the signal, auditory signal, and this area understand the, the, the speech. 
if there is a stroke in this part of the brain or this part of the brain is damaged, the patient will be able to receive the signal in this part of the brain, but he won't be able to understand what is being told to him. These lessons are part of my software called the Flash Brain Anatomy. You can check it out and purchase it. I put my website down there in the description, flashbrainanatomy.com. Then here we have the angular gyrus, and this area is important for reading words. It's called the visual speech center. If this part is damaged, not only it affects the ability to read, but it also affects the ability to write. And both of these last two parts are usually located in the dominated part of the hemisphere, the, the speech recognition area and the visual speech center. They're both located usually in the dominant hemisphere of the brain. There are also areas uh, for tertiary motor functions in sensible centers and for very complicated processes like logic thinking, playing, uh, you know, being talented for something, whether it's math or I don't know. And these areas are hard to differentiate because they really depend on individuality of each person. So some person might have parts really, really developed. For, for example, someone is talented for math or playing piano and so on, and in coordinating music with the speech, it, it's really it's really hard to find these areas because some persons don't have them developed, some have, and so on. This these lessons come as a part of my software that you can find on flashbrainanatomy.com. There you can find a complete compilation of my flash lessons together with my 3D models interactive anatomy. And with my software, I guarantee you you can learn the narrow anatomy in just two weeks. I hope this was helpful to you and if you're not going to buy my software then at least like, subscribe or comment. Thank you for watching.